So in today's video, we're going to look at why thousands of people are leaving the buy to let market, whether or not you should consider buying an investment property. And of course, a few other important key pieces of information that I feel you need to be aware of. So should we give up on buy to lets? Now I have done previous videos on this, which I will link in the comments below, but there are some key points that I didn't mention in that particular video that I think are worth noting now. So we can see from the summary here that buy to lets have become increasingly unprofitable for landlords. One thing I don't agree with is that we're seeing this impact yet in terms of the falling house prices, but we are seeing higher costs obviously for landlords and there are changes to capital gains tax as well along with some company structure stuff that we'll touch on in this video now it's hard to overstate the impact of rising interest rates as chris norris who's a director of policy at national residential landlords association puts it and he states there is a world of difference between what you can achieve today if you're applying for a remortgage or a new mortgage compared to this time last year and essentially this is what i always say when it comes to should you be buying a property now the deals that made sense two or three years ago or the ROIs or the yields for example they're no longer making sense and essentially if we look further down here it states that just a three percent rise in interest rates which let's be honest is pretty much what we've seen equates to an additional interest cost of 250 pounds a month for every hundred thousand pound borrowed now landlords on fixed rates are going to feel this pain and also this doesn't just apply to buy to lets it also applies to residentials where we're going to see two million people see their monthly costs go up now obviously you can see this money facts chart here just showing the interest rates and if you ask me the days of cheap lending are over at least for now now some silver lining if that's what we want to call it is that mortgage rates are starting to normalize so in the last video i mentioned that my expectation for this year is potentially one more base rate rise and then we're going to start to see things stabilize and essentially this is what is mentioned in this article here that they think in late 2023 or 2024 we will start seeing rates decrease but not to the rates that we were used to so friends you need to be mindful that your mortgage costs are going to be a lot more which therefore means you need to make sure that you're buying at the right price or the rent covers the mortgage adequately and hamptons actually calculates that on average which i thought was quite interesting for a basic rate taxpayer they now need to purchase a property with a seven percent yield to make after tax profit on renting it out now of course that's for basic rate and also be mindful that there's certain differences if you buy it in your personal name as opposed to a limited company so an interesting little metric here just to have in the back of your head now something worth noting i think is that buy to lets are becoming less tax efficient investments for higher tax rate payers who own them in their personal name so this is why you see a lot of property investors or people buying their first buy to let look to buy it in a limited company just be mindful friends that if you are starting a property business and let's say you want to flip houses or you want to potentially invest in them it's important to have two different limited companies because a sick code is different and obviously it can impact you when it comes to a tax perspective. I'm not a tax advisor, so please do seek the necessary advice from your tax advisor and your accountant as they do kind of have different jobs in relation to setting that up and moving forward in your property journey. But essentially, if you've got something in your personal name, we know that Section 24 was introduced where essentially mortgage interest couldn't be offset. So for many people, they were having to add their gross income to their normal salary and essentially some people were actually losing money by having that property so make sure you set yourself up first i always say start with the end in mind and then start to work backwards now there's also some other stuff which came out in the renters reform bill which essentially features a package of reforms to protect renters including the ban on no fault evictions which is in section 21 and also they're proposing that by 2025 all newly rented properties should be required to have an energy performance certificate rating of c or above now according to the government proposal that is currently stuck at consultation phase but if it does come it's going to be interesting how they actually phase this in and then of course we have hmrc's capital gains tax receipt which estimates that 47,000 investment properties and second homes were actually sold in the three months to november 2022 which is a 21 percent year on year increase so it's interesting to see so many landlords leaving the actual market and I think the actual figures when I when I checked on another report was much closer to 70,000. Now, if you are looking to invest in property or you do have your first buy to let property, for example, I think this little infographic here is going to be important. Screenshot it because these are the things that you should be keeping up to date with. Of course, I'll try my best to update you guys through these videos, but make sure that you just keeping your eyes on these because they're going to have massive impacts on your overall profits so then the question is should i stay or should i go now buy to lets have considered moving and even myself there's certain properties that may not do as well i've thought about selling them i always say if you ask the question should i buy a buy to let now you need to finish that sentence and essentially what i mean by that is should i buy a buy to let as opposed to leaving it in the bank for example so there's always an opportunity cost when you ask yourself that question and if you don't have 
nothing to compare it to, then it's very difficult for me to even get you thinking about whether it's the right decision or not. There's a lot of risk with buy to lets. It's not as profitable as it once was. However, there's still always deals to be had. If you can buy something, maybe if you can do a buy, refurbish, refinance type of project, things can still work out. But remember, because of the mortgage rates and because of the tax implications, you're probably not going to make as much profit as you may have made even just three years ago. So be mindful of that. Also be mindful as well that lenders do look at the monthly profit. So technically there's 125% minimum interest coverage rate, which essentially is just the ratio of the gross rental income to mortgage interest payments. There just needs to be that buffer every single month. And obviously that's just to mitigate some of the risks. Now, if we just quickly look back at the energy efficiency aspect of it, Robert Salter, who's a director at Blick Rothenberg, he states that a lot of old stock would need a lot of improvements and he therefore understands why landlords who have properties that are EPC dated D or less will be looking to sell at present times. And according to a government proposal, landlords will be expected to spend up to 10,000 unnecessary energy efficiency improvements regardless of the property rent or value, which let's be honest, isn't going to be feasible for many people. Some might not have the actual income. Others may not even have the means because let's say you need to strip something out and fully renovate it, for example or do a lot more work and you've got tenants in there, that again may be difficult. So it'll be interesting to see how this is implemented. But as it rightly states here, landlords who decide to stay in the market should be prepared for a growing level of regulation and scrutiny. We are going to touch on this in a few moments time as well about why all these changes and all this kind of demonizing of landlords or putting pressure on landlords may not actually be a good thing. Now, if you're thinking, should I buy a buy to let as a pension pot, for example, there are people typically in their 50s and 60s, as stated in this article, who may have some contacts, may have a little bit of energy, hopefully more, more than myself, because at the minute, being a landlord isn't the greatest thing, in my personal opinion, where they may want to put their money into a buy to let as a kind of safer vehicle than, let's say, leaving money in the bank. So I do just want to quickly jump on to, obviously, what you saw on the thumbnail, which is the Tory war on buy to lets has backfired. It turns out we need landlords. So there's been a lot of demonizing of landlords trying to drive them out of the market. And essentially what this article states is that all we're doing is reducing the flats available to rent and driving up prices. And we'll just look at a couple of points within this, my friends. Landlords are selling up in droves, rents are soaring and tenants essentially can't find anywhere to live and property owners can't make any money. So it almost seems like it's a mess on both sides of the table. And it's stating that Britain's property market couldn't possibly get any more dysfunctional. Caveat out there, I do also rent as well and my rents have gone up. So I feel like I have a bit of a perspective from both sides. One, as a landlord and a developer, but also as a tenant myself. And I'm not going to run through all this in detail, but there is a lazy assumption. And I think it's important noting this is that behind this government policy, there's always been this notion that greedy landlords are the main problem of the housing market. Simply deflecting any of the problems and issues that they've had in terms of overinflating this housing market and causing all the problems, it's very easy to push the blame on landlords. And essentially what they used to state was that without them, there will be plenty of properties for younger people to buy at affordable prices. And this is often what I see a lot of younger people say on my other social medias like Instagram and TikTok saying, well, if it wasn't for landlords, I could buy my house. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. And this notion of driving them out, everything will be perfect. It doesn't work like that. In fact, it's not actually working like that. Because what we are seeing in certain parts of the UK is that flats are disappearing from the market from a rental perspective. And with mortgage rates soaring, people essentially can't afford to buy them either. So what's this mean? Major cities as well as student towns, it's becoming impossible to find somewhere to rent. And if you do find somewhere to rent, unfortunately, it's going to take up more than half your salary. So it is crazy times, <laughs> literally what it states here. And in reality, a healthy, vibrant property market, which I would do agree with here needs plenty of homes both for sale and for rent and the reason I say this my friends is yes a lot of people want to buy properties but a lot of us want to rent as well including myself because maybe you're a student maybe you're shifting between jobs maybe you like the flexibility maybe you like to travel or maybe you don't want to be tied down to one particular location there's many factors to this not one size fits all so the way I see it is that landlords provide a stock of property for that particular section of the market which is actually around a fifth in total according to this so by demonizing them and driving them out the market all we've done is make the whole system worse which i definitely feel it is right now and it's going to be interesting to see how the impact of landlords along with residential mortgages going up what actually happens to the housing stock and what actually happens to the prices because you've only got to type uk property crash into google and you will see people stating it's going to go down by 11 percent 30 percent Whereas others are stating that actually those waiting for a crash, they're not going to be too pleased because no crash is coming. So that's going to be interesting as well, my friends. And then finally, just some breaking news. The UK property asking price has rose by £14 in February, which is the weakest gain on record right move reports, with sellers now more realistic about what property is worth. And I think this is going to be a good thing. And I still do believe, my friends, house prices are going to come down. But of course, let me know 
if you think I'm wrong. As always, thanks for watching.